Welcome to Florida. The 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series season was one for the record books. From Florida to Wisconsin, Texas to New York, no the world's best anglers went to battle over nine events to determine our 2022 yeah. season champion. And everywhere they went, the fishing delivered. The start right out of the gate in Florida yes. in February 2022 lived up to our slogan, Big Bass, Big Stage, Big Dreams. This is the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series Review Show. Hello and welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore. The 2023 season getting closer and closer, but we're spending our time for the for the time being, sort of getting fired up by looking back at big moments from 2022. We had a great elite season in 2022, Ronnie. I mean, we started in Florida, went to the Carolinas, we went to two events on the Tennessee River, Texas, and then New York, and we wrapped up with two big ones in the Upper Midwest. You can't beat it, but something about Florida when everybody else is cold, you're down there catching big ones. It's great. That's that's the one thing we're going to start our 2023 season in Florida as well. But 2022, we had a back to back swing in Florida. Florida is one of the toughest places to win and winning is hard time. You know, there are anglers that fish 20, 30 years at the top level gotcha. and never get a major victory. So winning is a big feat and winning in Florida is very tricky. In February, Florida normally has a lot of cold swings that end up happening and the fish are in different transition modes. And we got to see that at both of our stops. We thought the spawn was going to be wide open at the Harris chain that did not come to fruition. And then at the St. John's River, a little bit of tidal influx, a little bit of uncertainty. You have the ability to lock into a yes! place and a lot of veterans take the title at the St. John's River. And we got to see one, a guy who's been on the Elite Series since its inception, get his second major victory here at the St. John's River. Wins are so rare, you know, it, they just come along when they're supposed to come along. You, like, you can't force it. That's where my mind is. If I don't catch a good bag, I'm not, I'm not gonna win. The first day, the drop shot was really the bulk of the weight. It caught a good one on chatterbait. Yesterday was just kind of a dream come true. Everything just really came together amazing. Uh, the plan that I had from the early in the week of practice and the conditions, it, it just all kind of came together. If the size is not there, I might come back to the river and fish uh, the last part of the day. We got till 4.30, see what happens. 4.30. We made the, the trek up here to Rodman. Uh, went through the lock and all that kind of stuff and got up here and started fishing before 8.30. So that's that's a good thing. Uh, yesterday morning, I had about an hour and a half before I caught my first one, but my first one was a five pounder. So that was pretty, pretty amazing. So now I've kind of made my way over here to where I caught that first fish and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fish through here. Um, just really just kind of jerking and finesse fishing a little bit. We got a few more clouds mixed in. So I would, I would expect the jerk bait to be a little bit more of a player today. Um, we're just going to kind of kind of let the fish tell us. Ho, 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 ho. Easy now, son. Easy now, son. Get away from that ball. But come to me. No, no, no. Stop all this. Got it. Hut, 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 hut. Hut, hut, hut. That's the old football land. That's what I call that. I don't work. I was fishing through a jerkbait over there, saw one come up and look at it, and then it went down, and then it went down deeper, so I pitched a drop shot over there in the vicinity. I could still see the fish that, that followed the jerkbait, and I dropped this down, and I lifted up, and the one was on there. I don't know if it was the same fish. I'm gonna drop down there and see if I can catch another one. Little guy, I think. Little guy, quite possibly. Get in there, buddy. There you go, thank you. Playing the game. Come on. There you go. Yeah. Come here, baby. Down here. Slide around here, buddy. Gotcha. Three in the boat. 
slow and steady, man. It's not like fast and furious. It's just slow and steady. Yeah, always just try to catch as much as you can. If you if you think that, you, oh, I'm good if I get 15, or I'm good if I get 18, or, you know, all these weights, what happens is if you actually catch that in a quick fashion, you might mentally take your foot off the gas, whether you know it or not. That's a big mistake. I've made that mistake in the past. I'll do it again. I promise you. Well, not. Little guy. Didn't feel like a big guy. John Cruz, one of the most popular guys on tour, is looking to solidify his first Elite Series win in 12 years down on the St. Johns River. He knows there is still a lot of fishing left, though, and a lot of big name anglers gunning for that top spot. Stick with us and we'll watch John Cruz continue his chase for a second blue trophy. We'll be right back. Yes! Welcome back to our 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series Review Show, where we are just getting started on our look back at an amazing and record-breaking 2022 season. Right now, we're at event number one for the season down on the St. Johns River in Florida, and founding Elite Series member John Cruz is starting day number three on his quest for a season opening win. Let's get back to it. All right, so my buddy, Mr. Chatterbait, bailed me out uh, this afternoon. Got that full size D bomb on the back there, half ounce jackhammer chatterbait. Uh, that big D bomb on the back, I like that bigger profile. 20 pound sunline yep. sniper, D bomber, cashing chatterbait rod. It's got chatterbait right on it. Damn. And a seven to one Daiwa Tatula Elite. That's where that sucker hit it on the fall. Uh, that sucker hit it, missed it. I think, I'm guessing it was the same fish. Hit it, missed it, came back, came back, I pitched it in there, hit it on the fall, but didn't get it. Reeled it back in there, threw it in there one more time. Got it that time. Got it that time. Big one. Get in here. I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, I didn't expect 28 pounds yesterday, so I wasn't gonna uh, shortchange myself and have low expectations for today. Uh, but I was able to make adjustments. We made some good calls there late. I'm happy, really happy about that. I think that's how I'm gonna have to catch them the rest of the week, uh, tomorrow at least. And hopefully we can catch them good enough tomorrow to, to make that final day, give us a shot. But. Uh, definitely going to have to continue to make adjustments and um, just going to see where this puts us. Once again, John Cruz is leading. All right, so we're just starting out here on the river this morning. Uh, we got got low water this morning to start with. That's why I wanted to kind of start on this deal and try to catch a couple on the outside edge of these pads while it was early. I thought I was going to have more clouds, but it's already kind of sunny. Pads are, are laid over because there he is. Little guy. So, number one in the boat. It's early. I'm, normally, if I was going to Rodman, I would, I'd be waiting on the lock. I wouldn't even be in the lock yet. When the tide goes down, a lot of lily pads kind of lay over. If you want to try to catch them with reaction baits, that's a better way to do it when it's lower water on most tidal rivers. So we'll have, we'll have some low water this morning for, you know, till about nine or between nine and 10, then it'll start to get too high and then it'll start to flood the lilies and then uh, they'll be kind of in a transition before that high water bite comes on. The quiver did deliver for me today. Uh, that was the one that put that six pounder in the boat for me. It was the bag maker. Stay on. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Don't do this. Come here. Come here. Gotcha. Oh, quiver will deliver, baby. Wow. 
Why did you oh my make gosh. that move? Oh man, that, that whole deep bite. I just felt like those fish were leaving. You know, you, I wasn't seeing them. They weren't there. I knew that there's a lot of beds in this area. So, here we are. I hadn't even thrown it until today. Just the conditions keep changing. Um, that first day, the drop shot was really the bulk of the weight. It caught a good one on chatterbait. The next day, I caught a couple of them on chatterbait, a couple on a drop shot, mixed it up. Both of those bites died today. And I don't know exactly why, um, but they just, they died. And I had to kind of change gears. And I went and caught that six pounder, caught a few other ones on the quiver. Uh, I got a 5 16 ounce weight, uh, Gamakatsu 3 out hook, 20 pound Sunline shooter, uh, cash and flipping stick, and Daiwa high speed reel. That was, the, uh, that was the combo today. I did catch a couple on a Zoom fluke today, just a couple of limit makers. And uh, I have no idea what I'm gonna do tomorrow. We're gonna have a lot different conditions. We're actually gonna finally, in the first time in four days, we're gonna get some wind. So I'm thinking that the jerkbait bite might get a little bit better. Uh, I have not been able to really put much in the boat. Caught a few the first day on a jerkbait. I think going into the last day, I'm gonna have to make some adjustments. I can't keep doing the same thing in the same areas. I'm gonna have to expand like I did today. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna have to bounce around until I find the key areas to put those fish in the boat. A little 14 ouncer. Maybe 12. That's five. Ain't pretty. Well, okay, one's pretty. Ain't pretty. So you might say, why aren't you going back out there and throwing those other those others pads where you cut that big one? Well, we are in just a minute. We got plenty of time. Be all right. So we did wrangle us a limit, but we got, got a lot of upgrading we can do. Fished as hard as we could, made a lot of adjustments. I feel fortunate to have caught 12 pounds, but I also am a little disappointed. I'm not sure that what I found and what I caught the fish on today is gonna be what I'm gonna need to do to win the tournament. Uh, I feel like the field is gonna be coming to me. It's gonna make it more, a little more even. Um, I think going into tomorrow, it's a place you can catch a big bag uh, and we're gonna get a weather change. So I expect at least a couple big bags tomorrow. I think I'm gonna need one of those to, uh, to pull this thing out, but um, feel fortunate just to, to be able to go into day four uh, with a chance. John Cruz putting on a big show down on the St. John's River on the final day, but he still has a lot of day left ahead of him. 12 years after his last elite win, can he close the door on this one? Stick with us after the break to see how it all plays out. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series Review Show, where we are into the final day of our season opening event of 2022 at the St. John's River down in Florida. Just a few hours left to fish, and it's John Cruz in the driver's seat, looking to finish off an impressive season opening win. All right, here we are, day four, right where you want to be, St. John's River, three pound lead. We want to keep it that way. We want to make sure we stay up front. I'm uh, going to have to change it up a little bit. We've got changing conditions. I think that's a good thing. I'm looking forward to getting out there. Uh, haven't had these kind of conditions the whole tournament. So that's one thing I'm really excited about. Some of the stuff I want, I've been wanting to do, I think might actually work today. So we'll, we'll have to go see. I like this. <laughs> he kept telling me to catch a big one. I love the, uh, the first run of the morning. It's always fun, especially when, when you're first guy out. There he is. Delicate, I wanted to be delicate. I love the bass. 
the bastard, my friend. That's a two pounder. One at a time. It's a white, switch it up to a white jackhammer with a white missile base D bomb on the back. So you just gotta battle all year for everything you can, especially on Championship Sunday. Thumped it. Dude, he hit the snot out of that thing. Keep it going. I like the way that this is starting out. Just gonna keep on. It'd be alright with me, just keep catching them on the river here. Felt like something whacked at it. What in like a real hard. Got him. Another two pounds. Hold up. A little spro scissors here. I'm throwing 20 pound Sunline Sniper. Um, it's that's what I always throw a chatterbait on. Sometimes I'll downsize a little bit if I'm trying to get it a little bit deeper. Cashing chatterbait rod. It's hard to get a good chatterbait rod because some of them, some people try to use too stiff. If you have too limber, then you can't cast it accurately. Come on, yeah, come on. I threw it right into his mouth. I don't know if you can see that. I threw the chatterbait over there right to the pad edge and it was sinking. And I, as soon as I reeled up, he had it in his mouth. He hit it on the fall. Four pounder, little chunker. That's a heavy four right there. Beautiful. .70. I feel like we put it all out there. I feel fortunate. I think we made some good decisions throughout the day. I tried a bunch of different stuff. Um, the weather kind of changed throughout the day. I didn't expect it to get, you know, bluebird and sunny. Uh, so at least some of the things that we tried worked. I think we got at least 16 pounds, hopefully a little bit more. Um, yeah, only three pounds over Cox. I mean, who knows what that guy caught. I mean, anybody really in the top 10 could catch a mega bag. Um, but if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And um, if not, we made a good run at it. Four days of absolutely flawless fishing for John Cruz, trying to win his second ever Bassmaster Elite Series event. It had been over a decade since his first title. 17 pounds and an ounce! 17 won with 75 pounds, four ounces. John Cruz is a 
two-time Bassmaster Elite Series champion. Leading wire to wire, John Cruz takes the title at the St. Johns River. What an amazing tournament to start off our 2022 season. Astonishing performance, and it will definitely go down in the record books. A big, big win for John Cruz here at the St. John's in 2022, and it couldn't happen to a more deserving guy. An angler who's been with the Elite Series from the beginning, a true innovator in our sport. Congratulations again to John Cruz on his win. And what an event to kick yes. off our 2022 season. After the break, we'll stay in Florida at the Harris Chain of Lakes for another great event from this past season. Stick with us. Welcome back to the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series Review Show, where we're taking a look back at all the biggest wins and moments from our incredible season. We're ready to move on to event number two of the 2022 season, down at the Harris Chain of Lakes in Florida, a place that has a long history in Bassmaster competition and always has the anglers chasing those big, big Florida bass. This year, it would be a win for the third year Elite Series Pro, Buddy Gross. Son, we're gonna look at that. I'm talking about skin hook, shaking like a leaf. I don't get tore up. That right there, I tear you up. Here we are at the end of the second day here at Bassmaster Lead on Harris Chain. You know, today was a slower day for me. I didn't catch near as many fish. I got on something a little extra today that may produce later in the week. We caught some on moving baits, caught some dragging today. It just took a little bit of everything to get our limit today, but stay tuned. It's gonna be a great show. We're gonna catch them tomorrow. And Buddy Gross is your brand new leader. <laughs> he is going to do. But he's the only guy ahead of you right now, Buddy. How you feeling here at halfway point of this tournament? I mean, you got this group of anglers but like this behind you, you're never safe. You know, and I've been having to struggle to get to the limit yesterday, so we're just gonna go fishing and see what happens. It's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. We're gonna see you all day long on Bassmaster Live. No point is disappointing me. Two days in a row. I'm making up. I sorry point, I'll take it all back. Thank you, bro. There's one. Load. You know, they ain't big, but we gotta start somewhere. Thank you, Lord. That's a big one and I barely got it hooked. I'm gonna try it. I shouldn't have both flipped it, but I just flipped the heck with it. Oh, we ain't done that yet. Hey, we got four more. I this place marked three years ago because I thought there'd be fish on it because it drops off right here and the shell bed's on it. I've never caught a fish here until this tournament. Not even in practice did I ever catch a fish here, just till this tournament. That's pretty sweet right there. 
They're stolen. That joker loses that thing, he's gonna be lightweight. Eaten. Fat little dude. Still grass though. That's what I tore up whenever that fish hit it, got down in it and I could feel it ripping it up. But the good thing is, you see how crispy and green it is? Most of it on the lake right now is like that other color. It says it's got the moss, the black. As long as it's that good crispy green, they love it. Feels like a piece of I don't know if it'll color or not. Made a small cull. Thank you, Lord. Very small cull, just ounces. Buddy Gross is off to a great start at our second event oh of the 2022 gosh, season good. down at the Harris Chain of Lakes. He's won on the Elite Series before, though, so he knows there are still plenty of ups and downs left before this one is on the mantle. Stick with us after the break. We'll watch Buddy Gross keep working toward the title down in Florida. We'll be right back. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. We found where they went. Come on. Oh. Welcome back to the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series Review Show, where we are taking a look back at our season opening Florida swing to begin the series schedule. Right now, Buddy Gross from Chattanooga, Tennessee, is on fire down at the Harris Chain of Lakes in Leesburg, Florida, and looking to shut the door on his second Elite Series win. Hey, we made the top 10 right where I want to be. I got all these guys right where I want them. Now we got to catch them. I like being a little bit behind. It pushes me harder. I feel good about today. I think they might be in trouble. We're not sure if Buddy Gross went fishing this morning because we haven't heard a word. And I got my mind set on about 30. That's our goal today. If we run into them, it don't take long. It's a good one, I think. That ain't four, but I'll take it. Maybe, come here. Ho, 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 it's a good start. Right where I told you they was, oh, they're just on the break. Thank you, Lord. It's the first one on Carolina rig this week. Hopefully it puts some fish in the boat. That new Z-worm is a bad dude. Z-crawl worm. your butt in this boat. That's pretty good. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Little chunk. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hang on. I just want you to ride for a minute. Whoa! Lord! We're going to put her on the big side. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Thank you, Lord. I, I tear up my line with a Carolina rig all the time. I tried something new. I put a new little bobber on this thing to try to keep it from tearing my line up. And I think I fixed it because it's not tearing it up. This is something new right here. See, I'm telling you, they're doing something weird. See, that's on the outside. It's like double bumping. I, I don't know if I'm running into them and they're running my line. That's something weird going on right there now. See how that thing's 
That's some weird stuff right there. Thank you, Lord. I just want to see what happened. I know I'm getting bit. Everybody's going to think, well, what's he doing? But I'd much rather catch him on that plane right there. <sighs> Telling you, there's some big ones that's hanging over here to the right, and I can't get bit over. 20, 40, 60, they're 80 feet away. But they're just going left and right. They're going right down this break. They're swimming. They're not sitting still. So that's that's a pretty good size one right there. But they're all moving. That white dot right there is probably, see that moved over here this time. Boat's not moving. That's how many they're just coming through. Uh oh. Lord, that was on a Texas rig. My Carolina rig is just a three quarter ounce weight with a five out owner hook. And I'm putting some little rubber stops on the top side of my Carolina rig to keep it from chafing my line. And it seems to be working because I, I break a lot of fish off Carolina rig. I always have all my life. Or a bobber stop or anything down there below it and it keeps me from messing my line up so bad. Best thing you can do with your hook, any hook you pick out, just make sure where your line tie is, it's not even with your needle points. You need it to be halfway in and you just get a better hook up. Look, I told you that it that swim bait and I knew it'd be a bigger one. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. The boys better catch them today because that's a good fish and we just put one bigger in the box, boys. My swim bait addiction started with old, you know, just deep fishing. I mean, it's always a heavy weight, head big, head deep. And you set the hook on them deep ones and the rod don't give and you just I mean, uh, growing up on chicken mock gunners, well, I had got to catch a lot of big fish in my life. But the funnest bite is a swim bait bite. If I don't catch another one, you done a good job, Bubba. I hope it's got it good, because it might cool. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. I ain't sure how to get you, hold up. Just don't get it in me. Whoop. Lordy mercy. Guys, we still ain't done a whole lot of moving. We're just kind of going up and down this break. I'm still seeing some fish. We ain't caught one in about 15 minutes. We're still catching some three and a halves. I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer. Golly. Thank you, Lord. Golly, that's about dead heat. We can just catch this one big and I feel real good about today. It ain't gonna be a real big one. I mean, we just, we got a solid bag. Just need a good one. Golly, bum. I think that was a pretty good fish. My, I think that was, I couldn't even reel him. Not what you want to do on the last day 
of a Bassmaster late event. <laughs> I'd like to win, I ain't gonna lie. Them blue trophies are hard to come by. They wasn't playing, it seen it, it wanted it, it left with it. I know that one's bigger. <laughs> Surely that one's bigger. Three ninety. That's a good fish, guys. All we gotta do is have one of them three pounders turn into a six pounder. I might do a break dance right here for you. I might. I used to do the windmill, it's been a long time. A little warmer, I could do a backflip off here though, for sure. I wouldn't even try it. I don't think I do the worm no more. You're just trying to make gold. And when you set it, when you get to the first next goal, you gotta go to the next one. You know, you just gotta keep on making gold. And, I mean, I hope I go in and I've won and I've said, well, I can't believe I stressed that, but you just never know in this game. You just never know. I don't think what I've got's enough to win. I'm three pounds behind. That means nobody caught 20 pounds that was ahead of me. I find that hard to believe that didn't happen. I tried, bub. Lord, I thank you for a great day, a great week, a great tournament. Let's bring out our champion, ladies and gentlemen, two-time Bassmaster Elite Series champion, Buddy Grove. A big week for Team Grove and Buddy Grove two-time Bassmaster Elite Series champion. Buddy Gross with an emphatic win at the Harris Chain of Lakes. What a performance from a guy who's always in contention this time of year. He takes home his second Elite Series trophy and will definitely be one to watch in the quickly approaching 2023 season. He wasn't yeah. the only one to shine at the Harris Chain, though. After the break, we'll take a look at the patterns that came up big in 2022 at the Harris Chain. We'll be right back. Mm. Welcome back to the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series Review Show, where we just watched Tennessee Pro Buddy Gross take home the title in our second event of 2022 in the Harris Chain of Lakes down in Florida. He wasn't the only one after the big ones, though, down there. Florida is known for its giant largemouth bass, but it's not as easy as our pros make it look. Ronnie Moore and I are here to break down all the best patterns from 2022 at the Harris Chain of Lakes. The Harris Chain of Lakes in Central Florida, Leesburg, Florida. All together, these lakes, let me, let me call them out here, Ronnie. Harris, Little Harris, Eustace, Griffin, Dora, Beauclair, Carlton, and Apopka together. Just the lakes themselves make up 75,000 acres. That's the size of a good size uh, regular stop on the Bassmaster Elite Series, not to mention all the connecting canals. But Ronnie, during the first, especially two or three days of the tournament, it seemed like 90% of the field was all in just one of those lakes. Yeah, I think on day one, Tommy, we actually had six cameras out on the water and we got to see six different lakes come into play. But as the tournament went on, like you said, half of our people who made the day three cut were living in Lake Harris, which is where our takeoff location was. And it was also where a great contingent of hydrilla was. And that's why we saw a lot of our leaders early in the event came from there. We saw Buddy Gross obviously won the event, but also was the day two leader as well. Those guys sampled Harris very well. I think that Harris showed out because that grass that was protected around that island, it really was a great highway for fish pre-spawn, post-spawn, and probably fish that were spawning within the vicinity of that grass line. It lasted a lot longer than most of our experts expected it to. And Buddy Gross, I mean, our winner actually came from there, although he was he was oh not, God. shall we say, in the thick of it. He was kind of nibbling around the edges of it. Yeah, he's not a guy who likes the middle of the pizza. He likes the crust, and he was just kind of on the edges of it. He never really dug into one oh specific it's area in tackle. Harris. He always changed it up. He said on the phone after the event, man, I caught him in two or three different spots over the last few days. I had to always adjust. I always had to figure it out. And I think that was what ended up killing all those people in the Banana Cove region. They ended up cannibalizing each other and did not win the event, but we saw a lot of guys fishing that area. Ray Hanselman rose to the top of the leaderboard, as well as Kenta Kamira, both throwing different lures than most anglers. 
Obviously, Ray Hanselman keyed in on that hybrid yeah. hunter from striking. A Woo. different kind of diving crankbait, one great for grass. Meanwhile, we see a guy like Kendrick Greer throwing a speed worm above the grass. That was a big deal, but we did see anglers sample it every morning at minimum to get a quick limit, and that was a guy like David Mullins. He would get in there every morning, start with five fish in Harris. He would end up making the run through the Dead River, go through Eustis, Haynes Creek, and he would lock through to Griffin, and that was where we start to see him rise up later in the event. Day three, he was basically our unofficial leader all day long, but he did say, I'm worried going into the final day. I was running out of fish. I was not seeing nearly as many fish in Griffin. So he ended up leaning on that area in Banana Cove to get a limit on that final day. But there were some other anglers who also kept Griffin in play. Absolutely. A one of the greatest performances of the tournament happened to be Drew Benton, who really based his operations around there and the Connecting Canal. Yeah, if he would have had maybe a poorer practice in, a, uh, in another region, he would have put all his eggs in the Griffin basket. But he dedicated day two, three, and four to Griffin and ended up finishing second place in this event. But it's always very interesting. There are thousands of canals at the Harris Chain, many lakes to choose from where you go, but which canals fire up during the full moon? Which ones have a flood of fish or the ones that are not pressured? He ended up going in Griffin. That's kind of an ordeal to get through there. People did not go to Griffin as heavily as we maybe thought previously, and he had a lot of those canals to himself. Ended up making that charge, had over 60 plus pounds for three yes. days from yes. day two through four made a big surge in the second place. And how about our day one leader, Brandon Lester? That was a great performance. It was an up and down roller coaster for Brandon Lester throughout the course of the thing, but 23 pounds on day one. Dora and Beauclair were the two lakes that he concentrated on during the four days. We, we were very excited to see Brandon Lester start so strong in Dora on day one. We said, ooh, this is gonna be a different mixture. We're gonna see something a little different than the people maybe in Apopka, Harris, Griffin, Eustis, all those lakes. We were seeing something a little bit different. And for Lester, big start to the day, but we really saw it get tougher on him day two. He had to adjust and ended up coming through big on day three and day four, finishing in the top five. But Tommy, I want to talk about Brandon Lester's track record in Florida. He may hail from Tennessee and he may love his home state, the volunteer state, but he would probably buy and have a retirement house in the state of Florida. The last 10 times we've been there, whether it's the Elite Series or the Opens, whether it's the St. John's, Harris Chain, Kissimmee Chain, or Okeechobee, he's had a top 35 10 straight times. That is putting money in the bank account, including earlier this year when he got his first victory. Yeah, when he's in Florida, he is not pining for his Smoky Mountain home. He feels perfectly at home there. And Brandon Lester, hats off to him. Our day one leader, just too much up and down for him to be standing there with the trophy at the end of the day. Yeah, and one other aspect I'll mention, we got to see a new influx on the Harris Chain, the added addition of Apopka. Apopka was basically a big dead mass of water. No one would ever go there. Two or three boats would go there. We saw You're over, talking about a decade ago. Yes, yeah. a decade ago. And it has came on so, so strong recently. We had over 20 anglers on day one travel to Apopka, and that was an added flair to this event that was much welcomed. We got to see a couple guys in our top 10 do that, but I think that lock situation, only three boats at a time, the process it gets through there, and the length away from Harris ended up hurting the guys potentially who wanted to try to win it from Apopka. But an added flair to the eight lakes that make up the Harris Chain. Buddy Gross with an impressive win at the Harris Chain of Lakes in event number two of our 2022 season. What a win, and what an angler he has proven to be since joining the Elite Series. Definitely one to watch in the quickly approaching 2023 season. Well, that's going to do it for us today on the Bassmaster Elite Series Review Show. Be sure to join us next time as we continue to look back on the biggest and best moments from an action-packed season. We'll see you then. <laughs> Yes, yes.